We can't live our lives without timber, whether that be through construction and building materials, whether that be through the internal fixings in your house from kitchens to furniture, or whether that be your garden fence, your garden shed, or the packaging that comes through your door. Woodlands provide all of this as a sustainable, renewable material, and it can be incredibly helpful as we fight climate change. Carbon sequestered during the growth of trees can offset the use of more carbon intensive materials such as steel and concrete. The production of timber and its sale is a really important means of generating income for the landowner. And that income can also help to support and underpin wider woodland management which delivers a range of benefits for our society such as biodiversity, ecological benefits, a place for recreation, and as a place that can help to deal with things such as flooding and water management in the landscape are really important. And it's important that when we're focusing on timber production or we're thinking about growing for trees, those considerations, those factors, are thought about at the same time. To ensure this happens, it's really important that we think about something called the UK Forestry Standard. The UK Forestry Standard underpins sustainable woodland management and forestry practice in this country. And it's important that when you're thinking about timber production, you make sure that any operations, activities or plans that you have around that are compliant with the UK forestry standard. If we're going to grow trees for timber, there's a number of things that we need to think about and take into account. Trees like the one behind me here don't just grow to that standard without a bit of intervention and a bit of care. And it's crucial right from the outset that you know what you're trying to achieve with your timber. So where do we start when we start planting trees? It's crucial we've got a management plan or a plan for that planting, which identifies which species are best suited to the site to make sure that they're going to be resilient in the future, and that the combination of species that we're planting can grow together and don't outcompete each other or cause problems for one another. It's also important for growing timber that we consider the space and that we plant trees at. Some trees require to be grown closer together to ensure that they grow clean and straight, other trees, which grow rapidly, need more space early on to ensure that they can maximise volume production. All of these things need to be considered at that initial planting stage. Once we've got our trees in the ground, we then need to make sure we look after them. So as those trees are developing, we need to make sure that we keep the planted trees clear from weeds. If we use a natural regeneration, we might need to introduce something called respacing, which is where we go through and introduce a spacing which delivers our outcomes amongst the trees that have regenerated naturally. As the trees get older, especially in broad leaves, we might want to think about things such as formative pruning, where we can actually remove heavy branching or remove forks in the crown, which will allow the trees to grow clean and straight and produce the maximum volume of timber possible. As those woodlands, those stands of trees develop and start to mature and grow rapidly, we need to make sure that they've got space to grow. And a crucial tool in doing that is thinning. And that's where you go through your woodland and you select trees to remove to encourage the growth and the form of the remaining trees. That process can go for a number of years, but ultimately the end point that we're aiming for is harvesting. The point at which we start to remove trees for sale and start to think about regeneration of that woodland. We can do that through clear felling, where we remove a large area of trees in one go and then come through and restock that same area. Or we can use smaller, more complex systems where we might do group fellings where we take smaller groups away and let them regenerate or we might even want to use something like continuous cover forestry where we go through and we select individual trees to remove over a long period of time and maintain canopy cover to some degree across the woodland whilst the next generation of trees regenerates underneath it. All of these systems are appropriate you just need to work out what your objectives are and what you're trying to achieve and crucially all of them can be underpinned and paid for by that sale of timber. There's a few other things we need to think about then, if these are the processes that we want to go through, from planting the trees to getting them out at the other end. The first thing is that we can have all the best plans in the world, but if we don't control deer, we don't control squirrels, and we don't control any other in unintended damage from weeds, etc., then all that hard work can be undone very, very quickly. So it's important that we consider that protection element. We also need to think about how we're actually going to get in to do that work. So access right from the beginning is really important. Access to allow your planting contractors in, access to allow you to get in and weed and maintain the trees at a young age. But then as the trees develop, access to allow you to come through and remove trees and harvest and get machinery into the woodlands. And you also need to take into account the fact that you could have public access and members of the public using your woodland who you need to keep safe and protect from forest operations. Mowing rides and maintaining open space within the woodland, although used for access, provides a perfect opportunity 
for all the benefits of the woodlands, which is biodiversity and ecology, or for recreation. Good planned out access is crucial to avoiding ground damage, unnecessary travelling of machines, and to ensure that woodland management operations remain compliant with the UK forestry standard. When you put all this together, over a duration of a stand of trees growth, it's incredibly satisfying to see the ability to produce trees like this at the end of it, which can be worth a substantial amount of money and really help to underpin woodland management. If you'd like any further information about woodland management, I suggest you go to gov.uk forward slash manage hyphen woodland.